views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Homelessness continues to be a big problem across New York City and the organization that we're focusing on today was started as a response to deal with just that. They have helped people get off the street and also in the homes. And coming up on this very special edition of Perspectives, we take a look at how they're making a difference and a big problem that's gripping New York City. What's on your mind? Let them know. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Let them know. Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make your move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, you speak on your decisions. Because in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective, which shines a light. Because it might make a difference in someone else's life. What's your and hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I am Darren Jaime. Of course, we invite you to stay connected to us here at Perspectives. Every week you can check us out on Channel 67. Also, we invite you to check us out on social networking sites. That's Facebook and Twitter. And uh, then also on my professional page, Darren C. Jaime. You can get a different perspective every day and uh, we kind of share something of in uplifting and information. Try to you know, just let people know that there's some positive things happening in the world because there's a lot going on that's really challenging right now and uh, we need a voice out there. And one of the voices that we're talking about right now is this organization because they are really raising their voice in the area of homelessness. Uh, it's a problem that's been gripping New York City and we're talking about the partnership for the homeless. It's a one-of-a-kind organization that's here in New York City. They're founded in 1982. The mission has evolved from the provision of emergency shelter and services into what it is today. Now, here to tell us more about it is Janice Tostop. She's the career mentoring coordinator, and Mario McMichael, the director of the Economic Opportunities Program at the Partnership for the Homeless. And thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Thank you. I kind of wish we weren't talking about this because it's sure. it's, it's such a, a, a terrible problem that we're having across New York City. And it, we look at the holidays and winter, especially. You see a lot of people who've really been struggling. But you guys, as I said, started in 1982 as a response to the growing problem of homelessness. So show us a little bit about your organization. Sure. So uh, the Partnership for the Homeless has two main sites. There's our Family Resource Center at 100 Pennsylvania Avenue in uh, East New York. And then there's our main office, which is at 305 7th Avenue in Manhattan. And so most of the programming happens out in East New York. So there we have a housing program. So uh, families who are looking to apply for a uh, FEPS voucher, we assist them with those applications and then help them find housing in the community. Uh, after that, they transfer to our family stability program. So stability is essentially uh, ju just what it says, right? So after a family goes into the community, they have to acclimate to that community. So this could mean connection to like recreation centers, uh, houses of worship, um, domestic violence centers, substance abuse centers, et cetera. Uh, we also have a few other programs. Our Education Rights Project helps kids who are a part of uh, homeless families really uh, acclimate to their old and new school system. So if you're familiar with the McKinney-Vento law, the uh, federal laws that are specifically for children of homeless families, they give them access to you know, busing, um, specific services that have to deal with counseling within the schools. Our Education Rights pro Project just ensures that that happens for those kids. Uh, we have a health initiative specifically with those with the HIV or AIDS diagnosis mm -hmm. that's really focused on uh, peer support groups and workshops and also um, specific housing for that group. Uh, we have an, we have an uh, leadership development institute. So this is essentially grassroots organizing, mm -hmm. right? So we want to empower members of the community in order to advocate for themselves on issues that they think are most of most importance to them. And that kind of brings us to EOP, which is the newest uh, program at the partnership and based out of our 305 office. Um, essentially what we're focused on is attachment to the labor force and long-term career development. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's critically important for the population that we serve because often what we find is that you know, our clients go to workforce development programs and other social service agencies and they find jobs that 
can kind of help them to sustain, right? So, you know, sustain on a uh, voucher or sustain while they're on public assistance. But our goal is much higher. It's uh, focused on what we call a target job. And the target job is the job that can help you to lift your family out of poverty. No more housing voucher, no more public assistance, so that you can support your family long term. Janice, share with us a little bit. You're the career mentoring coordinator. Yes. And uh, so you do, some, you do some mentoring. Talk to us about what you do. Well, I always joke and tell people that I have the best role in the program because I am very passionate about mentoring. Throughout my life, I've had tremendous mentors, teachers, ministers, um, people in the community who encourage me to stay in school, who encourage me to not just get a job, but really to map out a career. Back in 2009, uh, a tremendous mentor came into my life, uh, Fred Scaglione. He was an editor and he was an author and he gave me an opportunity to write a blog about human services topics and I did that for six years and it was a tremendous opportunity for me. It gave me a platform to really talk about the work that I was doing in the human services field. Um, Fred passed away a couple of years ago and before he did he had an opportunity to fulfill a dream and he wrote a book um. that I'm really proud of. Um, I didn't know he was writing a book and when I found out that he, had, he, he was so soft spoken and when I found out that he had written this book I was so proud of him and I said I've got to get a copy mm -hmm. and uh, he autographed it for me and it's, it's just a wonderful read but he was very passionate about this field about human services and through his work he gave um, individuals like Mario and our colleagues and myself an opportunity to talk about our work to talk about the work that we do the challenges that we face because he was really compassionate about people and about again lifting people out of poverty so I just wanted to acknowledge yeah. Fred he was a tremendous mentor in my life in terms of our program, our goal with the mentoring piece is to match our women with uh, professionals who are working in the fields that they aspire to work in. And we ask our mentors to make a, a year-long commitment to work with the women, and we ask our mentors to accomplish three specific things. Firstly, we ask our mentors to help the women develop their professional networks. We all know how important it is to have a robust career network. So we ask the mentors to help the women develop those networks, to accompany the women to networking events, to expose them to people in their network who they think would be beneficial to the women as they're mapping out their careers. I gotta jump in right quick. I gotta tell me I gotta take a break, take a break, be right back in just a second. Well, I got this as a paid internship. Spending my time here, I really enjoyed the people that work here. I enjoy what goes on behind the scenes. So far, I've learned how to operate a camera, how to host. I learned how to control audio. My first time hosting was really nerve wracking but I really enjoyed it because it was a new experience. Welcome back. We are here on Perspectives. Our topic of conversation, the homeless crisis, of course, in New York City. Uh, the Partnership for the Homeless, our guest, an organization that's been 
going since 1982 dealing. And uh, Janice, before the break, you were talking. So let me let you finish what you were saying. Sure. So in addition to helping the women develop that professional network of individuals who are going to assist the women as they build their career path, we also ask the mentors to help the women with um, industry-specific culture, because we all know that the culture of a construction site is very different from a culture um, in a law firm. Mm -hmm. So we ask the mentors to get the women acclimated to what types of, what, what the expectations will be in different types of industries. We also ask the mentors to work with the women on their soft skills, those skills that we all know, those characteristics that help us be successful in the workplace. So we ask the mentors to help the women deal with issues like punctuality, deal with issues like playing nice in the workplace, which mm -hmm. we all know is very important, um, learning how to collaborate, learning how to be leaders in the workplace. We want to encourage the women that we work with to tap into their leadership skills. We know that a lot of them, because their moms, have tremendous leadership skills. So we want them to tap into that, and we want them to aspire to be leaders in, in their industries. Mm -hmm. So that's what we ask. So Mario, when we talk about workforce development, um, I want to talk to a little bit about workforce development beyond minimum wage and the work that's being done there, because we know minimum wage has been, a, has been a huge fight here in New York City, but to really push beyond that uh, is what you guys aim at doing too. Sure, so uh, long-term career development, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just uh, help a person to get a job in a couple months or three months and expect them to kind of take it from there. It's really an investment. And when I say investment, I mean investment in a few different areas. So one is education. So, and that's inside the program and outside. So while our clients are taking soft skills and readiness courses, so learning some of the stuff that Janice mentioned, um, like conflict resolution and communication styles and those sorts of things, it's also about how do you invest um, outside of our program. So. Uh, secondary education and post-secondary education. This may not be going to the route of, you know, getting an associate's degree, getting a bachelor's and a master's. That's more traditional. But it may just be, you know, going to a six-month or nine-month training program that can get your foot in a particular industry. Right. And so when we talk about this, I want to ask you this question about where we are today, because you guys have been, you know, boots on the ground for a minute. How do you see things? Do you see things getting better? Do you see things getting worse? Do you see things like, you know, uh, because I was talking with someone just the other day and they were saying, you know, this winter will probably be one of the worst winters we've had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a little bit of both, mm -hmm. right? So you do have some organizations that are taking, you know, huge strides forward and trying to create career pathways for this very same client population. But then at the same time, you also have thousands, literally thousands of people that don't have access to these programs for various reasons. So it could be because they, they can't meet the, the minimum entry requirement, right? They, they don't have a high school diploma. They don't have an, uh, or, or a high school equivalency. So therefore, they can't enter the program. Or it could just be because, you know, they don't know exactly where these programs are located. Mm -hmm. um, it could be because they speak English as a second language. So there are tons of barriers that just come with that. So our focus is really on trying to address those particular client populations that are often shut out from typical programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've worked in workforce development for a while, and um, my focus has always been to help people get those life-sustainable jobs. That is extremely important to me. I mean, we all know living in New York City is extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. And I've seen clients get jobs paying minimum wage. And I know that that's, that's not leading to any kind of sustainable career path. So I've always had the commitment that when we help clients, we really have to do all the things that Mario said. You know, invest in the education, invest in those services that are going to help our clients get those jobs that are going to help them get off public services, and live the, the economically sustainable lives they want to lead. And you also do a good job of helping parents who have a history of homelessness as well. Absolutely. So, um, as I mentioned earlier about family stability, it's, it's not just specifically about workforce development and education, it's also about the wraparound services. Mm -hmm. So how can we help our clients to address those issues while they're participating in the program? And if, if I can say, you know, a, a lot of organizations will make a referral to another CBO and then say, okay, well, you deal with that issue with this particular client. And so we try to take it a step forward by creating what we call a linkage. So this is 
yes, making the referral to the organization, but then working in lockstep with them and then addressing the issue from an employment perspective. So let me give you an example. Let's say a person you know, comes into the program, there's a significant domestic violence issue. We can make a referral to a domestic violence center, but then we're also you know, working with that domestic violence center and then addressing some of the symptoms. So mm -hmm. if that same client has, let's say, issues of anxiety that stem from domestic violence, but it happens when they're in an interview, it happens when they're on a call center, there's 100 people around them. How can we talk to them about, you know, dealing with those symptoms in those environments? That's what EOP does. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break in a few seconds, but before we go to break, i got a couple more questions we want to get in before, before the break uh, comes about. When we talk about solutions, because we always talk about the problem, let's talk about solutions. What are some of those um, economic and educational solutions that we can really be applying or at least put our, our eyes to when we talk about the homeless crisis? Mm -hmm. Oh, so many, so many different things. Um, one of the things that I like about our program is that we have a trauma focus because that's extremely important. So many people have been traumatized by their life experiences. And I think that unless you deal with some of that trauma, people are going to continue to spiral and spiral and spiral. So I think definitely mental health services or services that are going to help individuals deal with the trauma, help individuals deal with what Mario refers to as those internal assets, giving them an opportunity to see all the potential that they really have. I think that is extremely important. And again, pointing individuals not to, you know, to career pathways, not to the minimum wage jobs, just to satisfy a quota or a number, but really helping people develop career pathways in those industries that we know are going to pay them a, a decent wage. That's right. very important. When we have conversations in our office, we, when, when we talk about uh, the uh, client's career interests, we're always thinking about what does that career pathway look like because we don't want the women to settle for you know, the least paying job. We right. want them to really think big and settle and, and aspire to those jobs that are going to really pay them, you know, you know, really sustainable salaries. And you guys do a great job of digging beneath the surface. I told somebody before, you see a homeless person, they've got a cardboard sign, and they're always saying, you know, we need money. The truth is you don't need money, you need a job. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, going the extra mile of really going there and seeing exactly what's needed mm -hmm. uh, can, can really make the difference in the lives of a lot of the people that you're working with. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a quick break, but I want to come back and hear some of the stories that you guys may have had of uh, those people who've uh, had some great success coming through your program. So stay with us. got more coming up. Raft this. And welcome back. Continuing our conversation, our guests in studio come from the Partnership for the Homeless, an organization that deals with the 
homeless crisis that we're facing here in New York City. And uh, before the break, I was talking a little bit about uh, success stories. And I mean, many times we see the pain and we see mm -hmm. uh, the people, but we don't always get to highlight the success stories. So talk to us about some of the people that you've actually been able to, uh, you know, see that have taken full advantage and, and, and really come through. So uh, one story in particular that um, uh, really comes to mind is, you know, a lot of the clients that we serve, so you, you have the, the clients that actually participate, right? So they come to orientation, they go through the programming, they may drop off, they may complete it, right? But you have a large number of people who never make it that far. They sign up, say they're interested, but they never make it to orientation. Mm -hmm. So our big focus is what happens to them, right? Do they go to another organization? Do they find a job, right? Or do they not? And so one of the pieces that we put in the program uh, is, at the very beginning, is art therapy. So we use it as a tool to be able to change a person's perspective, to make them feel like, you know, yes, I can obtain this lofty kind of goal. It, it is within my purview. And uh, one client in particular, when she first came to the program, you know, her, her identity was closely aligned with homelessness. Mm -hmm. And it made her feel angry because of the stigma associated with that word, mm -hmm. right? So, um, but as she kind of talked with us, she talked with our staff, and as she kind of got acclimated to our, to our processes, you know, she, you know, would come in and say things like, oh, well, I already know about interviewing. I already know about soft skills. I don't need that class, right? Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of said, okay, well, you know, maybe there's a couple of pointers in here that we can help you out with. So just, just hang with us, mm -hmm. right? So as she came through the program, ended up working, found a great job, and she entered into our art therapy workshop. And what she was able to do was create this um, box with goals in it. So mm -hmm. the goals that she was currently working on, she put in the box. She said as she completed those goals, she would tape it to the back, right? Mm -hmm. Because then it would let her know that, number one, this is what I'm capable of doing. But number two, this is what I am currently doing, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the kind of perspective shift that I'm talking about. The fact that she can create a box like that and, and then overlay it on her life and say, this is me. Right? right? That enables a person to take the next step, right? And so for her, as she, as we debrief from this art therapy workshop, she talked about how, yeah, I remember way back in the day how you guys, you know, were, were talking to me about interviewing and about soft skills, and I didn't really like it, but here's how it helped me, mm -hmm. right? Here's how I can connect that information to what I want to do in the future, and now I believe it. And right. going through this art therapy session is, is evidence of that. Yeah, we got some pictures we're going to show, and uh, I think I'm going to call on my uh, producer to help me out with the get the pictures that we can see, and give you guys an opportunity to share a little bit about what goes on and what we see. You know what what, what we can see, and so as soon as they uh, get it up, I think we'll get it up. But in the interim, uh, I'll get Jan. Oh, there you go, right there. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> we're, uh, okay, show us a little about what we're seeing. That's me working with one of the clients. She went through uh, the mentoring workshops that uh, Mario and I developed mm -hmm. and uh, she, she really enjoyed them. She really, and she's currently, she's <clears throat> back in school and she's working and uh, yeah, we, we were trying to convince her to come on today but people are really yeah. camera shy so uh, yeah. <laughs> we understood. But yeah, she's, I keep in touch with her and she's really making good progress, yeah. And when you talk about the mentoring, I mean, obviously that's a big component, and uh, yes. we're seeing more uh, more of the pictures. But yes, one of the mentoring workshops. This was an interview workshop. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And how much of a difference maker do you, is it to have that to have that mentoring workshop? Because I think sometimes uh, people devalue mentoring, but obviously it's very it's, it's very uh, effective. The women who went through the workshops, uh, I mean, Mario can tell you best, like, because they were always going to him saying, we love, we love the mentoring workshops, we love the mentoring workshops. And I was really pleased with that. Mario and I sat down and we mapped out what workshops we thought would be effective, and then to implement them and to see the, f you know, phenomenal response that, uh, you know, that we got from the workshops. It, it was really wonderful. And the great thing is we had volunteers and we had some of the mentors teach the workshops and we had uh, some of our uh, community partners from, from some colleges. They also conducted our workshops. So the, the women, they loved the workshops. And I'm, I'm glad that they really appreciated the mentoring component because just like you just said, you know, sometimes people devalue it. But having a mentor, having someone who is there in your corner to give you encouragement and support as you're trying to build a career, it's invaluable. It's mm -hmm. very important. 
So before we wrap up, I want to get a couple of things out there. For people who don't know how to get in touch and, and, and you talked about the awesome services that you guys provide, how do you go about getting in touch with you guys? Sure, absolutely. Uh, they can certainly visit our website, uh, www.partnershipforthehomeless.org, but also they can reach out to um, us at uh, our 305 office. And the phone number there is 212-645-3444. All right, so you want to make sure that you get in touch with them. And if you have any questions or you want some more information, make sure that you get in touch and, uh, and, and, and find out. As far as biggest challenge, what do you find the biggest challenge uh, of your work to be right now? Um, so I would say that it's, it's not with clients, right? It's really about values and belief systems, yeah. right? This is so much bigger than just employment. It's bigger than even homelessness, mm -hmm. right? So looking at it from a very... Uh, macro lens, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that um, certain programs exist, the fact that institutions exist that put our client population at a huge deficit long term, mm -hmm. those are the things that we're fighting up against. You know, if you look right. at the prison industrial complex, if you look at the shelter, the shelter system and the voucher system as an extension of that shelter system and how it institutionalizes people. We're fighting against those things through programs like this. Mm -hmm. Before, it's so funny, before, as I was traveling here to the studio, a young lady stopped me in the train station. She said, excuse me, would you like to sign a petition? We're trying to fight for fair fares. And I'm like, thank you for asking me. And, and I took the time and I let a train go by and I signed and I said, yes, you know, this is important. I said, you know, and, and Mario and I have had this conversation. If we could get like a reduction in fares temporarily for some of our clients, mm -hmm. like that would help them immeasurably it would help them to access the education and the training services that they need again so that they can you know embark on a career pathway and not just have a job yeah and it's yeah. important that we it's important that I mean I, I, I'm hundred percent with you on that one the fairs we were just having a conversation on this the last show uh, talking about how it just needs a whole lot of improvement that's another show absolutely uh, all, all by <laughs> call all me by, yeah, right all by, so I'll call you we're sure. always talking about yeah. it is that I'm right? always complaining is that, to him yeah, yes. it's, 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 it's crazy but, but I think the biggest challenge <laughs> is that you see you, you, you don't know how it impacts somebody yes. it might be very small to somebody else but there's a major impact right. particularly in your client base yeah. absolutely I mean I have no problem swiping people in I mean I, I'm like look people are trying to get to work they're trying to get to school and the fact that they don't have the money to travel like that is just outrageous absolutely absolutely yeah. well, we're about out of show we want to thank you guys for coming by and sharing with us today and sharing more about uh, your programs and I want to say if you want more information about uh, the partnership for the homeless you do have the website that you saw at the bottom of your screen did have the phone number up there as well Last second, anything you want to add? Right yes, now? we're always looking for volunteers to help us with outreach, to promote our program, to work with our clients. So again, people can go to our website. They can contact Mario. We'd love to have volunteers help us out. All right, contact Mario. There you go, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, and thank you so much for coming to be with us today. Thank you. For All right, us. listen, we are about out of show here on Perspectives. I want to tell you, thank you for watching. Now, listen, if you want to uh, take this time for a moment and just listen, just hear me out here. Perspective makes all the difference in somebody else's life because when you get the chance to share with somebody, you're, you're sharing you, you're sharing them, you're, you're having a conversation. And so as we go to 2018, there's a lot of different things that are happening. People are, you know, on different sides of the aisle, but it's important to hear, understand perspective because it really does make a difference. And so uh, as we're moving into a new year, we want to wish you a happy new year and the holiday season that's coming upon us. We want you to have a happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. Let them be happy, but at the also, let it be a time of sharing. And as you share perspectives, share this show as well. It continues to make a difference in the lives of many people in the Bronx and across New York City. And we want to continue to do that here. So thank you for all of us here on the set of the show. We want to wish you that for our producer, Curly Burton, for our staff, and all of those who work behind the scenes to make it happen. Listen, a happy, happy holidays to you, and we'll see you in 2018.